Hey guys, so the 2022 Senate elections have finally come to an end with Democrats doing very, very well expanding upon the majority that they won in 2020. They now have 51 seats to defend. Democrats were able to flip a Pennsylvania and hold onto their seats in Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. But in 2024, the map is going to be a lot more interesting and Democrats are going to have to defend some pretty difficult states to win, including Montana, Ohio, and West. Virginia, those are the three big ones, but also Nevada and Arizona, and also Michigan now, as Debbie Stabenow has announced that she will not be running for re-election after over 20 years in the upper chamber. And so basically in this video, I'm going to give you guys a very early look at the 2024 map, basically a brief overview of what we're going to be seeing over the next two years. And so I want to start off by filling in the solid states for both parties and so we can focus on the really competitive races. Now before that, I do want to also take a look back at 2022. Democrats really were able to do very, very well considering how unpopular Joe Biden was. At the time of the midterms, Joe Biden was really only approved of by 41% of the country. 53 to 54% had a negative view of the incumbent president. But considering these numbers, Democrats were still able to win with big victories. I mean, in Arizona and Pennsylvania, much larger than was expected. They were even able to win in Nevada with Catherine Cortez Masto defeating Adam Laxalt. And in Arizona, Carrie Lake was not even able to win the governor election as, of course, she lost to Katie Hobbs. So it was a very good night for the Democratic Party in 2022. But in 2024, things really may be different. 2022, the map was difficult for Democrats to defend. But in 2024, it's going to get a lot harder. They were able to do well in 2018 but that was a blue wave year and of course politics is getting more and more polarized by the day so it'll be even more difficult for the incumbents in Ohio, West Virginia, and Montana to win. So basically in those three states we have John Tester in Montana, he won by four points last time, Sherrod Brown in Ohio by seven points, and West Virginia, we have Joe Manchin, who only won by a three-point margin, but considering that Trump won this state by over 40 points in 2016, Manchin's victory really was very, very impressive and very crucial for the Democratic Party, as they would not have held the majority for the last two years, if not for any three of those victories. So coming back to the 2024 map, we have a whole new landscape to get used to. And so I'm just going to start off by filling in the solid states. We have a lot of very solid Democratic incumbents in the Northeast. They're all going to win their re-elections. Now in Maine and Vermont, we do have the two independents, Angus King and Bernie Sanders. And yes, Cinema has also become an independent in Arizona. We're going to go over that race later on. Democrats are also going to win in Maryland, Delaware, as well as Minnesota, where we have Amy Klobuchar, Maria Cantwell in Washington, New York, of course, Kirsten Gillibrand in Hawaii. We have Maisie Hirono, and then California's Dianne Feinstein is probably going to retire. She's going to be 91 in 2024. Uh, seriously, she's not going to run for re-election. Nobody really wants her to win. I don't think she would win a Democratic primary. Well, there's actually the top two primary in California, but I don't think she would win even if she did run for re-election, not because people necessarily don't like her, but she really is just a way too old for the job. She didn't become the press pro temp because of her age, and that instead went to Patty Murray, who is now technically the second highest official in the Senate behind Vice President Kamala Harris. And so with these solid states filled in for Democrats, we have 40 seats. Now for Republicans, we're still at 38, and they are at such a high number because they really just aren't defending as many seats. They're going to have a lot more money to pass around in these big races. So I'm going to start off with the states of North Dakota, Missouri, and Indiana, because these were three states that Republicans were able to flip in 2018. I'm going to go over Florida later on, but in 2018, we had the Democratic incumbents Joe Donnelly, Claire McCaskill, and Heidi Heitkamp run for re-election, and all three of them lost. Now, Donald Trump won all three of these states by pretty solid margins, but none of them as solid as West Virginia or Montana to some extent as well. Uh, but in North Dakota, Missouri, and Indiana, it was a very good night for Republicans. They were able to win all three of these seats. I mean, in 2012, Claire McCaskill was able to win her re-election by a solid margin, but just six years later, she would fall to Josh Hawley. And yes, Josh Hawley is very far to the right and it wasn't exactly the greatest during the insurrection. He really did try to provoke the mob, but 
that's not going to make too much of a difference. Missouri is not going to elect a Democrat anytime soon. Of course, we saw Eric Schmidt defeating truly Butch Valentine in 2022. So these three states are going to remain in the solid Republican column. We're not going to see Democrats here anytime soon. Tennessee and Mississippi as well. Marsha Blackburn barely won in Mississippi last time around, but this time she's going to win by a much larger margin. We also have Wyoming and Utah. We don't know yet if... Mitt Romney is going to run. If he doesn't, I think if McMullen does run again, he may have a chance now that there is no incumbent. If McMullen did lose to Mike Lee, but in it was really not that solid of a race for Republicans. Mike Lee only won by a 10-point margin against an independent in a state as red as Utah. In Nebraska, we have two elections. Ben Sass is going to be resigning the day this video is released, I believe, to become the president of the University of Florida. And so basically, we're going to have an appointed senator appointed by Jim Pillen for the next two years, and they'll be up for re-election in 2024. So this is the 2024 Senate map with all the solid states filled in. As you can see, Republicans are already at 47. The only two remaining seats that they hold are Texas and Florida. And so as long as they win these two races, which I can promise you they will, they're not going to lose a single seat this cycle. Republicans have a much higher floor than they did even in 2022. So let's just go over the two likely Republican states, because really 2024 is going to be about the Democratic incumbents, how well they do in the races that they are running in. So Texas, we had a pretty close race in 2018, where Ted Cruz only defeated Better O'Rourke by a margin of 2.6%. Now, this was a horrible margin for Republicans, especially for a Republican like Cruz, who was able to win pretty easily in 2012. Now, in 2020, John Cornyn didn't even win by double-digit margin, so I don't think Texas is going to vote for Cruz by a solid margin, but I do think that he's still going to win, even if Beto runs. Beto O'Rourke has been a pretty big disappointment, losing his last three elections. Of course, the first one to Cruz, the second one in the Democratic primary, and then the third one in 2022, he ran for governor and lost pretty handily to Greg Abbott by a double-digit margin. So, Texas is going to remain in the hands of the Republicans, and in Florida, we have the closest race of the, or of the 2018 cycle. This was the election between Rick Scott and incumbent Democrat Bill Nelson. Nelson is now the NASA administrator, but before that, he was a senator from Florida for 20 years, and he did lose by 0.12%. This was the only tilt race of the cycle, and so looking forward in, at 2024, Scott is going to win by a much larger margin. He is relatively popular, and of course, we saw Republicans do very well in the Sunshine State with Marco Rubio and Ron DeSantis easily winning their re-elections. Rubio, I believe, also won by a solid margin, just like DeSantis, who won by almost 20 points. So Republicans are going to hold on to all of the seats that they won in 2018, but they might gain some more. But before that, I'm going to take a look at the likely Democratic states. So these are states that Democrats are going to win by margins between 5 and 15%. Of course, solid is anything over 15. And in these likely races, Democrats have a very, very good chance at holding onto them. But there is a slight possibility that they could become a bit more competitive. So the first race that we have is Delaware. Here, Bob Menendez is running for re-election. Uh, he is going to win, but he really didn't do very well in his last two races. And New Jersey isn't the solidest of blue states in the East Coast. So it's going to be slightly competitive. In Virginia, I'm going to classify it as being likely. Democratic right now, but Tim Kaine isn't very popular. He, there's just no enthusiasm behind him. He was the failed 2016 vice presidential nominee running with Hillary Clinton, and so in, in Virginia, he was able to do well in his last election, uh, but I don't think he's going to win by a solid margin, especially considering Glenn Youngkin being elected governor of the state in 2021, and we do actually have a poll for this race. Tim Kaine only defeats Glenn Youngkin by a two-point margin if they were to hypothetically go into a head-to-head -head matchup against each other. And so Virginia, for that reason, is not going to be solid. It has not become a solid Democratic state, but has definitely seen a significant shift to the left over the last two decades. 
I do have three more likely Democratic states, though. The first one being New Mexico. In this race, I don't think it's going to be too competitive. Martin Heinrich is going to be running for re-election there. He was able to win by a solid margin last time, but that was with a three-way race. Gary Johnson was running as a spoiler to Rich. And then the last two states are both going to be in the Rust Belt. Here we have Tammy Baldwin in Wisconsin and Bob Casey in Pennsylvania. In both of these states, the incumbents were able to win pretty easily in 2018. Casey won by double digit margin and so did Tammy Baldwin. They're both very popular in their respective regions and so I don't see any reason why they wouldn't win by at least 5% in the next election. If Debbie Stabenow were running in Michigan, I would put this state as being likely Democratic as well, especially considering how well Democrats did here in 2022 with the re-election of Gretchen Whitmer. However, of course, Sabinow is not going to be running for re-election, which is why Michigan is not going to be in the likely Democratic column. So with all the solid and likely states filled in, we have this map right here. 49 for the Republicans, 45 for the Democrats. And so we have six more races remaining, of course, Ohio, West Virginia, Montana, but also Nevada, Arizona, and Michigan. So I'm going to start off with Michigan. I do still think Democrats have the upper hand, again, just how well they did in 2020 and even 2022. Democrats have a history of winning in the Wolverine state, and I don't believe that the race is going to be that competitive. Although in 2020, we did see Gary Peters try to flip it, but I think the best strategy for Republicans going forward is to not try to split their money up too much. I think that they should be putting their resources into a more concentrated list of states. I think, of course, Montana, Ohio, and West Virginia, because they really only need to win one or two, or maybe one if they do win the presidency. They're only going to have to win one or two states to take back the majority, and that's what they should be focusing on, winning the majority, not winning as many states as possible, and risking losing many races if they are underfunded. And of course, in 2024, we're going to have a presidential election, which is going to be the big race, but the Senate elections are going to be important as well, and they will be heavily affected by who runs on both the Democratic and Republican sides. The good news right now is that Joe Biden is more popular than he's been over the last year. He is currently approved of by 44% of the country, and his disapproval is coming down to 50%. It might go lower. We're just going to have to see. But right now, Joe Biden is in one of the best periods of his presidency, probably the best one since the honeymoon period that ended in August of last year. Joe Biden's the current trend is looking upwards, but we're just going to have to wait and see what happens in the next few years. Definitely with him losing control of the House, he is going to be able to get a lot less done. Next up, we have Nevada. Here, Jackie Rhodes and defeated incumbent Republican Dean Heller in 2018. It was a pretty important victory for Democrats. Rosen actually won by five points. I do think she's going to win again in 2024, but 2018 it was a big blue wave year. We're not going to have that in 2024, but I think the race is still going to be pretty favorable for Democrats, so this will give Democrats their 47th seat. I'm also going to give them the victory in Ohio. Sherrod Brown has announced that he's going to be running for re-election. That is very, very good news for the party. Sherrod Brown is the best candidate they could put up. Yes, Tim Ryan did lose in 2022, but Tim Ryan is not Sherrod Brown. He is a three-time incumbent. He is very well known in the state. He is also relatively moderate, very popular, and so I do think he has a very, very good chance at winning a fourth term in just two years. Well, technically it's next year, but really the election is two years away. Uh, before we get to Montana and West Virginia, I'm going to go over Arizona. What happens in this race over the next few months is going to be pretty important. Kirsten Cinema has not yet announced officially that she's going to be running for re-election, but I think there's a very good chance that she does. But I do not believe that Cinema is going to win. Of course, she's not going to be the Democratic nominee. Democrats are not going to nominate her after just how terrible she's been over the last two years in the Senate. She's been blocking a lot of legislation um, that Democrats are putting out. And I don't mean terrible uh, objectively. I mean, for Democrats, they are not approving of the job that Cinema is doing. So we're probably going to see somebody like Ruben Gallego, who is currently a U.S. rep, become the Democratic nominee. And we ha did see a poll that his campaign released. Gallego is at 40. Kerry Lake is at 41. But of course, Lake isn't the best Republican. And Cinema is only at 13%. So I do not believe that Cinema is going to win. But I think that if Democrats ha run two candidates, with one of them being Cinema, uh, not Democrats, but she's going to be a liberal candidate as well, 
I think if they run their own candidate against Cinema and a Republican, Republicans may win. But at this point, Democrats do have the edge in the state just by default after how well they've done in the last three election cycles. So I'm not going to put a bath past them to be able to win, but I'm definitely not confident in Kirsten Cinema and the Democratic Party in general because of the situation that they find themselves in with Cinema becoming an independent. Now the last two races, Montana and West Virginia, it really is going to be very, very difficult for Democrats to hold on. They were barely able to in an environment that was of 2018. It was a solid blue and white environment. Republicans were heavily disapproved of. Democrats were able to win over 40 seats in the House, and so that's just not going to happen in 2022, which is why I do have both of these races as being lean Republican. Joe Manchin and John Tester have not yet announced whether or not they're going to run. If they don't, it's going to be solid red. There's no chance Democrats are going to win in either one of those states, but in 2018, Republicans ran some pretty bad candidates. We had Patrick Morrissey in West Virginia, and Rosendale in Montana, and those two candidates were just too extreme, even for the voters of West Virginia and Montana, to give them a reason to unseat their Democratic senators. So at this point, I think Republicans are, are going to do well, but if they do nominate bad candidates again, which is a trend that we're seeing with the GOP, Democrats may have a better chance. And so right now, this is the 2024 Senate map based on my latest ratings. Of course, we don't even know who many of the candidates are going to be, but based on what we're seeing right now, it's probably not going to be the greatest for Democrats. Now, they do only have to win one more seat if they want to hold on to control if they do win the presidency. Maybe they'll win Florida if that race gets competitive. But at this point, it's going to be an uphill climb for them looking forward. But so was 2022. The bat was not favorable. It was very easy for Republicans to win back the majority in 2022. If they had chosen better candidates, they 100% would have done so. But that simply is not what happened. And so we're just going to have to wait and see what happens over the next two years in 2024. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like it down below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Comment down below which party you think is going to win the Senate majority in 2024. Make Join my Discord server link at the very top of the description below, and I will see you guys next week for my next video.